In this video, we are going to uh, build on what we're learning by making a sphere in SketchUp. Uh, it's not really the easiest thing to do as far as making a circle of 3D shape um, in the SketchUp for Schools uh, because we don't have access to the add-ons that the other SketchUps do. Um, at the same time, uh, what we can do is basically use two circles and another tool to make it the follow me tool. So we're going to start with a new document today. Um, and this is the create new and we're going to go into or from our homepage here, uh, millimeters again. Once we get into our millimeters, um, it's asking me if I want to do it. I was working in a different little model in the background here while I, while I was doing that. And I do not want to save that while I was playing around. Uh, when we snapped in right away, we have uh, this person back here again as far as uh, Temple Grandin or our, our representative of scale. Um, we can select and delete that right away. One of the things I almost always do is come in to my views or my scenes here and I want to change from perspective to parallel projection, which makes everything look like straight lines and 90 degree corners. Um, I'm also going to go to the top view. All right now um, when I'm building my circle to start here uh, what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to create my circle uh, right directly on my red axis um, so to do this what I'm going to do is go into this circle tool which is the third thing down in our shapes portion which is a one two three four five six tool down in the third option in that uh, in my circles it asks how many sides I have first 24 is what it starts out as. We can leave it that. Um, when I select here, one of the things about making the circles is, uh, especially if we ever want to use the endpoints, so the little points that happens going around your circle, um, you want to click going straight up or straight out, and that puts those points in those spots or in the right spots. Um, if I select again, this gives me an opportunity to enter a radius. Uh, so let's just go and enter a radius of, let's just start with 200. All right, so 200 millimeters, I hit enter. Um, it did make it a little bit smaller, but remember if it does make it too small, you can zoom in and zoom out and find it. If you don't see it on your screen, remember you can always go to your zoom extents. If you click your zoom extents button, which is in the bottom here, barely seen by me, um, you should be able to make that snap to the middle of your page. All right, zooming in, zooming out to center that. Now, the next thing that I'm gonna do is to make a sphere is I'm going to make a circle uh, that's a little bit smaller than my inside circle. And it needs to be because in order for this to work right and not be broken in half or have a line in it, um, I gotta make my first circle, the one that's actually kind of going around the, I guess the equator of my sphere, be a little bit bigger than my other circle. Um, so this time what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the midpoint by hovering over the outside. If I hover over the outside of my circle, um, it will snap to the midpoint that way. And right now it's showing blue because we made that on the blue axis the first time. So this time we want to make it on the green axis. So the way we can make it on a green axis, if we hit our cursor keys to the left, it will snap it to the green axis. Uh, up turns it blue, right turns it red, and green uh, is to the left. All right, now it's locked in that orientation of we are building that circle. So once again, just clicking your circle, and then moving out, all right, it's making it, you can't see it right now from this view, um, but if I just drop it, all right, my last one was 200 radius. I'm gonna make this about 175 just to make it a little bit smaller um, so it fits inside there because we don't want our, our edges to crash together and hit the enter key there. Um, it's kind of hard to see what we have going on, but if I go now to my views, oh, if, one more thing I just wanna explain to you, I guess, quick, because I have it open and I was gonna close it, but. Uh, on the top here, there's this thing called instructor, this little hat, this little graduation hat. This tells you how to use all the tools as far as step-by-step -step instruction, all right, and what, on what you're doing there. Um, and then I'm just going to kind of close that for right now because I don't need my instructor open or my entity info. And then over here, there's also a search key where if you ever had any questions, like say, for instance, you want to turn your uh, surfaces um, x-ray, if you type in things here, x-ray it shows you where you can find it and how to to toggle it on and off and whatever it may be so if you ever any have any questions there you can always search it out too um, but anyways i was going over here and clicking on my isometric view which now allows you to see my two circles that i had made 
All right? And the important part here is that both of my circles have the same midpoint. All right? Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use a follow me tool. The follow me tool is kind of a cool tool because it allows you to create a geometry and then it allows you to kind of move around um, and follow a path and it will kind of extrude that geometry the whole time. All right? So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go into our follow me tool. It'll ask us to select a surface. All right, the surface that we want to select is this surface, the smaller of our two circles. And the path that we're going to follow is the path around our circle. All right, so that's circumference right here. So selecting this, then going outside here, and I'm just going to slowly go around my circle. All the way around. And that should build the entire piece that I have that way. All right, and I may have went around it too many times already. I'm just kind of closing that out. And then when I click on it, I have my circle made. Now, there's one more thing we need to do, and that is get rid of this outside piece here. All right, this, this extra stuff. How we do that is go into our selection tool. If we double click this, it turns that all blue. And then if I hit the delete key or the backspace key, I'm able to delete it. All right, and that's it. That's how you make a sphere in SketchUp. Okay, so uh, the one thing we can do right now is for this submission, uh, we can do a export as a PNG. Uh, remember, we can change our numbers here so they're a little bit closer. 600 usually works. And my stuff's not in the middle, but it'll still work for work out. Um, trying to see those links links your comments that way. But um, once we get our, our sphere in this place where we want it to be, we can export as a PNG. And reminder that puts it over here on my screen. So I'm on, a, I'm on an actual uh, computer. Yours will pop up over here um, in in your downloads. And then that PNG is your submission for or you're in the picture for your slide day four. Sorry, I almost said it wrong. Thanks for watching, hope it helps.